In the mid-1980s, scientists discovered a virus which causes AIDS. The virus was named HIV, Human Immunodeficiency Virus. The source of HIV infection in humans was identified to a type of chimpanzee in West Africa. It was most likely transmitted to humans and mutated into HIV when the chimps were hunted for meat and came into direct contact with their infected blood. The virus existed in the United States since the mid-1970s. Doctors in Los Angeles and New York reported that men who had sex with other men and who had weak immune systems died within a few months. A huge debate sparked among the scientists. Where did this virus come from? What are its symptoms? How is it transferred? And are we looking at a global pandemic? At the time when doctors in the West were fighting against all odds to find a cure, some sort of treatment for AIDS, the disease was almost unheard of in India. It would take them another seven years to discover the actual virus which caused AIDS. It was only in 1986 when Dr. Yusuf Hamid, a Polish-born Indian scientist who recently took over the drug manufacturing company called Cipla, was introduced to AIDS. His colleague mentioned that AZT is the only available drug for AIDS. At that time, AIDS had barely surfaced in India. It was a ticking time bomb where the government of India was caught off guard with the sudden outbreak of the disease. It was a pandemic waiting to happen in one of the fastest growing populations in the world. In Bombay, where Dr. Yusuf lived, AIDS was brewing so forcefully in Bombay's red light district that within a few years, it would earn the infamous title, AIDS Capital of India. After the outbreak, the government of India immediately asked the research head of the Indian Government Laboratory to develop a chemical synthesis of AZT, or azithromycin. Dr. Yusuf wanted Cipla to manufacture the synthetic drug derived from the original drug created in the West. AZT was the only drug at the time to prevent the onset of AIDS, but the huge problem was patent. At a time when the whole world was fighting this epidemic, Burroughs Welcome in the United States was selling the drug at $8,000 per patient a year, which was an abominable price even for Americans at that time. It was especially taking a toll in places like Africa, where the patients were getting infected at a faster rate due to the unavailability of the expensive drug. In 1993, Dr. Yusuf Hamid immediately reached out to the government of India and agreed to manufacture the synthetic drug at less than one-tenth of the international price, or about $2 a day. But even that was considered expensive for the general public of India. Dr. Yusuf then asked the government of India to purchase the drugs from Cipla in large scale and distribute the drugs, but the government refused, citing that it had money only for detention and prevention and asked Cipla to further reduce the price of the drug. Another few years passed when Dr. Yusuf read in the medical journal that a cocktail of three drugs was effective in controlling AIDS. It was called HEART, Highly Active Antiretroviral Therapy. But the patent problem again resurfaced when it was found that the three drugs were manufactured by three different pharmaceutical companies. This time the price skyrocketed to around $12,000 per patient per year. If you have exclusivity and a monopoly, you can charge what you want. Per patient per year, the multinationals, because of their monopoly, were charging $10,000 to $15,000 per patient per year. Until we came forward and said, no, we can give it to you at $350. Then when a damn thing costs $200 or $300, why the hell are you charging $15,000? Am I the thief or are they the thief? That's the question I'm asking you. Dr. Yusuf immediately began to manufacture the synthetic version of the drug, this time wanting to bring the price of the drug to less than $1 per day. By this time, many countries began to sidestep pharmaceutical patents and began importing low-cost medicine from India. India changed its own law to sidestep such notorious patents in order to bring much-needed low-cost drugs to the general public. 
it sparked a furious reaction from the big pharma companies. Fearing that other countries could also sidestep their patents, the international drug companies with the support of the US government sued India, claiming that it had violated the trade agreement called TRIPS, trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights. It was a deadly stalemate. Deadly because 24 million people got sicker and sicker as the stalemate continued. In the meantime, Cipla was asked not to stop manufacturing the drug. The problem was they couldn't sell it until the stalemate was lifted. By 2000, while India and other countries were fighting in the World Trade Organization against the patents, Dr. Hamid received a call from an activist in the United States. It was a former investigative journalist who had campaigned vigorously against the patents issued to the drug companies at a time when the whole world was fighting against the deadly disease while American drug companies were busy profiting off of it. The group of activists, along with Dr. Yusuf Hamid, had a single objective, which was to get affordable medicine to those who needed it, free from the stranglehold of so-called patents. Together, an Indian drug maker and the international activists were invited to the International European Commission on HIV and AIDS, where Dr. Yusuf took the podium and told the unfriendly group that he would sell the AIDS cocktail for $800 a year, $600 to the government who would be willing to buy it in bulk, even offer the technology for free to the African countries who might be willing to manufacture their own drugs, and also provide a drug called nevirapine, which limits the transition of the disease from mother to the child. Friends, I represent the third world. I represent the needs and aspirations of the third world. I represent the capabilities of the third world. And above all, I an opportunity. The audience, which included the Europeans, representatives of Western drug manufacturers, and ex-health ministers, remained unimpressed. No one took him up on his proposal. They laughed him off the stage, mainly because they viewed Indian generics as poor quality knockoffs, a perception that Hamid knew was false. As Dr. Hamid waited months for the European governments to take him up on his offer, he was steadily losing all hope. By that time, the Indian courts refused the legitimacy of patents of the international drug companies and allowed domestic drug manufacturers like Cipla to begin selling drugs to the general public and to the government at a cheaper rate, much to the disdain of big pharma companies. As GlaxoSmithKline CEO Garnier busted out at Cipla and other Indian generic companies at a 2001 healthcare forum, he said they are pirates. That's what they are. They have never done a day of research in their lives. The disease stabilized, at least in India, but the WTO still didn't allow India to export these life-saving drugs to the much poorer countries in West Africa, where the disease ran rampant. When word got out that India was selling the drugs at less than $1 per day, Western journalists began hounding Dr. Yusuf Hamid for an exclusive interview. He was more than happy to give it, in hopes that it would pressure the United States government to withdraw its support of the big pharma companies. On February 6, 2001, that was the day everything changed for Dr. Yusuf Hamid. He was instantly shot to fame after the front page story in the Times. Many news agencies in the West were astounded at the ability of India to provide life-saving drugs at such cheap rates and then began to question their own government's inability to provide such drugs at cheaper rates to its own public. As soon as word got out that the United States government supported the big pharmaceutical companies that prevented countries like India from exporting life-saving drugs to the much-needed poorer countries in Africa, there was massive outrage everywhere. The Bush administration at the time began feeling the heat for supporting the big pharma companies in the face of the global pandemic. It sparked international outrage. Many of the big pharma company's CEOs were shamed. It stoked street protests from Washington, D.C. to New Delhi. The breaking point for the Bush administration happened when accusations of genocide began flying in from all corners of the world. It was a massive debacle for the pharma companies. Its executives were hounded at every point. People began massive demonstrations in front of the headquarters of big pharma companies. Finally, the efforts of Dr. Yusuf Hamid and the activists prevailed. 
The big pharma companies announced in the following month that they would drop their lawsuits in the WTO and waive their patents so that the generic cocktails of AIDS medication could be sold cheaply in Africa. India, for its part, began to notice the importance of health industry and for the first time began to actively pour additional resources into research of drugs. Medical tourism became a $10 billion industry in India. Even to this day, the coveted medical tourism visa issued by India saves at least a million lives. Where the patients couldn't afford the high prices in their home countries like the US or the UK, where insurance companies could not or would not cover it, a total hip replacement costs at least $50,000 in the United States, while the same costs around $6,000 in India with facilities at par with the international standards. This means a patient could book a flight to India, get treated and return home and it would cost them less than 20% of $50,000 depending on the duration of their stay. Cipla continues to make life-saving generic drugs which cost thousands of dollars in the United States and sells it at cheaper rates to the government of India. In 2005, Dr. Yusuf Hamid was awarded the Padma Bhushan, India's third highest civilian honor, for his work in the life-saving drugs and fight against the big pharma companies. It was one dollar a day that changed the entire calculus of the West from we can't afford to help to we can't afford not to. So we will leave it right here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.